Okay, before I talk about the answers from this, I want to show you an opportunity to earn some extra credit. There are several people that are sitting right on the edge of a grade. If you happen to be one of those people that are a percentage point or two percentage points off away from a C or away from a B, <clears throat> this could make a difference for you. Go to my website. I'm actually recording as I speak right now. Just like one of the little videos that you watched while I was gone, this is doing the same thing. It's actually recording it during class. It will not pick up your voice as well as it does mine. And here's, here's why. My microphone is up here. And it adjusts the volume to my voice. So unless your voice was as loud as mine, it's just not going to pick it up as well. But I am going to tell you, that it will pick up background noise. Oh, and if you're listening to a video that has background noise in it, it's annoying. And you're going to find out that it's just as annoying to listen to in a video as it is annoying to listen to it in class. So the quieter it is, the better off it is. It's going to make a cleaner video. <clears throat> if you click on the tab that says 7th grade, and you'll find a 1013 recording. That's what the tab will say, the little button. You open it up, it'll play in YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, a lot of you do, you can comment right there. Just leave a comment, your first name, your last initial. Okay? I'll give you extra credit for that. If you do not have a YouTube account, watch it, send me an email, with your first and name and last initial so that I can look at it. If you think just sending me an email without watching it is going to work, I'm going to tell you it shows me how many people have watched it. So I'm going to look for the same number of people getting extra credit that have actually taken the time to click on. How many views do you have? <clears throat> right now, none because it's not even out on the web. Okay. With that being said, today make sure you're taking notes over the problems that people don't understand. I'll gladly go through them one by one, read through the answers. Uh, S. I think I did that one in class. You should have had N equals 8. E. You should have Y equals 2. H, you should have D equals a negative 15. Do I need to do E or H for anybody? H? <clears throat> You're going to notice that I am very consistent with the way I work something out. I do it the same way every single time. The things that I'm watching students do yet, try to take shortcuts. And I'm going to tell you, shortcuts is not a good idea. I take the time to circle where my variable is. Notice I attach the sign to my variable. Right? This is what I want to get rid of. The negative that's behind it has nothing to do with the 11 that's out in front. What type of 11 is it? It's a positive 11. How do I get rid of a positive 11? Subtract 11 from both sides. Remember that when I bring this 4D down, it's not just 4D, it's a negative 4D. I take 71 and I subtract 11, which is 60. If I continue to look at my D, it's being multiplied by a negative 4. How do I undo multiplication? Division. Two mistakes that get made on this problem. People think that this negative is attached to 11, so they tried to add 11. I have 
to subtract it. The other mistake is people drop this negative that was with the 4, and so they end up with a positive answer. But my answer should be what? Negative. negative. And it should be a negative 15, because 4 goes into 60 15 times. Everybody good? Understand what I've done? Okay. C, you should have X equals 168. I, you should have T equals a negative 27. And U, you should have W equals a negative 42. Do I need to do any of them C, I, or U? I. <clears throat> Again, I want to get the variable by itself. This is where my variable is. I want to get rid of adding 1. How do I get rid of adding 1? With me so far? Okay. This 3 is in the denominator. It means I'm dividing by 3. What's the opposite of division? Because this was negative, I want to make sure that I'm multiplying also by a negative. And I want to multiply by a negative because a negative times a negative makes a positive. And my 3's are now going to cancel out, just leaving me what? P. What is 9 times a negative 3? Negative 27. Do I need to do any of the others? C, C, I, or U? On G, then, you should have Y equals 30. A, you should have K equals a negative 16. D, you should have X equals a negative 40. Even if there's a fraction in a problem, it doesn't change the process of what we do. I want to get the variable by itself, so the first thing I'm going to do is undo the addition. And I subtract it. How is the two-fifths attached to the y? What's it being done? The two-fifths is being multiplied by y. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Let me ask you a question, though. If I divide it by two-fifths, do we divide by fractions? No. We keep the first one, we change it to multiplication, and we multiply by the reciprocal. We flip it. Right? So, saving that time, I could multiply both sides by 5 over 2. I kept it. I changed division to multiplication and I flipped it. What's going to happen to my 5 and my 2? This is really over 1. How many times would 2 go into 12? What is 6 times 5? 30 over 1 equals 6. 
Right, and I don't need to put it over 1 if it's still over 1, right? Y equals 30. Do I need to do A or D for anybody? D? Everybody good with this one? Can I go on? For this problem, again, I want to do the same process. Want to get the variable by itself? How do I undo the subtraction? Addition. Four plus eleven is fifteen. The x is really being multiplied by a fraction. And again, if it's being multiplied, I could divide or I could multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides. By a negative 8 over 3. And again, the reason I'm multiplying by a negative is because a negative times a negative is going to make a positive and I want a positive x value. My 8's and my 3's are going to cancel out leaving me just x. I can take my 15 and put it over how many times does the 3 go into 15? 5. What is 5 then times a negative 8? Negative 4. Did anybody need A? F, you should have Q equals negative 2. O, you should have M equals 15. L, you should have Y equals 7. Do I need to do any from F through L? O? The biggest mistake that I actually have seen on this problem is everybody's gotten so used to, to the fact that we've been moving something from the left side to the right side that they've wanted to do the same thing in this problem. But the variable this time is on the right side. I have to get rid of what's attached to it. How do I get rid of a positive 10? I subtract it. The tens are going to cancel out. 30 minus 10 is, and it's equal to 4 thirds m. Everybody with me that far understand what I did? Question? Okay. <clears throat> the last step, again, if I'm multiplying by a fraction, I could divide by it. But if I divide by it, I have to keep this, change division to multiplication, and multiply by it reciprocal, or being flipped over. But if I multiply this side by 3 fourths, I've got to multiply the other side by 3 fourths. My 4s and my 3s are going to cancel on the right side, leaving me just m. 
This can be put over 1. How many times does 4 go into 20? And what is 3 times 5? F or L, anybody? F? Anybody still copying? Where can I go? Again, probably the biggest mistake that I saw here in this particular problem was cheap people trying to move this 28. But remember, what I want to get by itself is what? The variable, the Q. I've got to get rid of the subtraction. How do I get rid of subtraction? I add it. The next mistake that I saw was putting these two actually together. Do they have the same signs or different? Different, so I subtract and I keep the sign of the larger absolute value. It is going to be negative, and it will be a negative 26. There's one step left. Q is being multiplied, so I have to divide. Q is equal to a, what kind of 2? A negative 2. For B, you should have X equals 56. Z, you should have T equals a negative 5. N, you should have N equals a negative 18. B? I want to get the variable by itself. And again, probably the biggest mistake that I see here is people try to attach this negative to the 8. What is the 8? Positive. positive. How do I get rid of a positive 8? I've got to remember that when I bring that down, I've got to bring it down with a sign attached, the negative 5, 7, 6. My negative 32 and my negative 8, same signs are different. different. Look at them again. Okay. They're the same signs. I keep their sign and I add those two numbers together. What is 32 plus 8? 40. So this is equal to a negative 40. There's my fraction out in front again. When there's a fraction out in front, I multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 7 over 5 on both sides. Again, the negative times the negative is what's going to make it a positive. My 7s and 5s are going to cancel out, leaving me just x. I can put my 40 over 40, 1. Couldn't you do 40 divided by 5 times 7? I could. It's really the same thing, yes. How many times does 5 go into 40? 8 times. 8. And what is 8 times 7? 56. And a negative times a negative is going to make 8 positive.
This is where my variable is. What am I going to do to the 1? I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. 99 equals a negative 11 over 2n. n is being multiplied by a fraction. I multiply by the reciprocal. It was negative, so I got to multiply by a negative. Okay. This is going to leave me n, because the 11s are going to cancel, the 2s are going to cancel. Negative times a negative is a positive. How many times will 11 go into 99? Nine times. Nine times. Negative 2 times 9 is? Negative 18. Negative 18. I'm sorry? Z? This one tricks people because what does it have in it? Yeah. Equals zero. But the process, again, stays the same. I want to get this variable by itself. What's attached to it? What's attached to it? A positive 65. How do I get rid of it? What is 0 take away 65? Negative 65. T is being multiplied by 13. I divide. And it will go into it what, 5 times. So it will be a negative 5. Y, you should have X equals 36. And R, you should have 315. Has anybody ever seen these age questions before? Or questions similar to this? It says, Mr. Mustard said, eight, 8 left. Let's stop there. 8 left. What does 8 left mean? I'm subtracting 8 from something. 8 less than something. I had to start somewhere to take 8 away from it. It says, 8 less than 3 times his age. I don't know what his age is. It says is. Is means what? Equal to. Equal to. What is it equal to? 100. There's my equation. You could. Okay. If I add 8 to both sides, I'm going to get 108. And then what am I going to do? Divide by 3. three. And x is going to be equal to? 36. So, Mr. Mustard must be 36 years old. Okay? Yep. You are a salesman for Acme Toys. 
Every day you earn $30 plus two-ninths of your sales. What dollar amount of sales do you need to earn today to earn $100? They want this equal to 100 I want to get my variable by itself. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the 30. How do I get rid of it? Subtract it. I have 2 ninths. X equals 7. When I'm dealing with a fraction, I multiply by the opposite, opposite the reciprocal. 9 over 2, 9 over 2. 2 actually goes into 70 35 times. 35 times 9 is 315. If she makes $315 worth of sales, she'll make the $100 for that day. I do not have band-aids. Mr. Mitchell does. I don't know what he is. Oh, I could get I could get band-aids. Oh, sorry.